Now we've looked at Docker before, but this time we're going to look at some of the more advanced features, in this case Docker Swarm. Since the video is in fact titled Docker Swarm on Ubuntu and Windows, I uh, guess what we're going to look at. That's right, we're going to put Docker Swarm on Windows and Ubuntu. Now to start off I'm going to reuse my existing lab, which in this case happens to have a Windows Core server floating around. So I'm going to go ahead and log into the Windows Core server and merrily install Docker following the Windows PowerShell uh, provider commands. Don't worry about trying to remember them, they are written on the screen a little later on. So there are basically two steps to this. First one is to install the Docker module, which is a straightforward process and as you can see you get prompted for would you trust and download this. The next part of it is to download the package itself, which again means first telling Windows that you have this repository and that this is the package that you'd like to download. Third and finally from this, you need to go ahead and then reboot the machine in order for those changes to take effect. Now we're going to pretend that we got to the reboot stage already so we can continue talking. At this point we're going to pretend that we've got our docker leader already up and running. You can have multiple leaders, although realistically only one leader at a time and then the others are just a standby in case it fails. So in this case you can see that we have docker installed and we've done a restart. So we're going to pop over to our Ubuntu machine and we're going to go ahead and install docker there. So in this case, very similar principle with two subtle d differences. One. I'm not going to need to reboot the machine. Secondly, our Ubuntu machine is going to be one of the workers, so we're not going to bother to configure it beyond quickly checking that uh, Docker is running. So you can see we have our addition installed. Now on the Windows machine that we've installed earlier, first of all we need to reconnect to it since we rebooted it. And secondly, we're just going to quickly show that Docker is installed and the version that's there. Now, first of all, to run docker uh, swarm, you need to run the swarm initiate command, so the swarm init. Now, if you just run that by default, you're going to get a lovely error message that will tell you that it, you need to select which IP address you're going to be advertising on. So in this case, we're just going to simply add the additional switch to allow us to add the IP address as the primary uh, interface for docker. This is straightforward enough and it helps if you don't remember typos like I did and that gets your swarm up and running. Now you'll be presented with your swarm join key and that's how you can get started with joining your workers and other servers. Now since this is a rather large key I would suggest that you export it to notepad or to a file or something in order to make it a little bit easier. But first let's prove that we've only got our leader available at the moment. So now I've popped over to my Ubuntu machine, I'm going to add the join command, and as you can see, that was very quick to say it, that it's joined the swarm. So if we hop back to the Windows, who happens to be the leader, we'll do the uh, docker node list, and you can see that we have a worker in our swarm. So we now have one Windows machine and one Linux machine. Not a very big swarm, but it's enough to get started, and we can start doing some, let's say, more interesting tasks at this point. So we now have one OS of each, and we can also uh, run some additional interesting commands, shall we say. So as an example, let's use labels as our next thing. Labels can be useful for giving uh, additional parameters or information, basically meta information, to any given node. So here we're going to type out a label and giving an OS label to the machine. Now I'm going to then go ahead and quickly generate labels for both machines and then show you why what I've just done is completely pointless but it proves a point. And also keep in mind that for Windows or Linux machines it is case sensitive on the host name. So let's have a look at the labels. So if I quickly run the docker node inspect command what that will do is return a list of information. Now you can specify uh, what node you want to run this against. So you could remotely run it against any node in the swarm, or you can specify self in order to get the node that you're on. 
So here I'm going to show you exactly why what I just did earlier was completely pointless. As we have a, a parameter here called labels that we've entered, which tells us it's Windows. But equally further down, we have platform, which tells us it's Windows. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to double up on these. Now, let's look at how this information might make a little bit more sense. Let's say that we have an image that we want to deploy only to a Windows uh, Swarm host because it's a Windows image, right? But a label might make sense in the way that we have something like a production hosts and development hosts or any way that you want to effectively separate things out. So we could say, okay, we have an environment that equals prod and then it, the constraint would be that that is your production host and that's where it's deployed. So labels can make a lot of sense, but they can also be completely pointless. So think about how you use them in advance, because there's no point in listing information that is already there by default. So that's one of the things to keep in mind when using labels. So what practicality do labels have? Well. The answer is pretty simple. If we go to Docker service create, and we're creating at this point the, the service, what we can do is we can add into the service a parameter called constraint. And we can say in that constraints, we want nodes uh, of this type. So in this particular instance, that's going to be, so at this point, it's going to be labels. Now, that can be anything from the metadata you've added, such as an environment tag, uh, production version. You could even have a Docker version in there if you really wanted and say, okay, this is my guaranteed supported 100% effective version versus the, I've got an experimental couple of nodes that I don't care that much about. Whatever the criteria is, you can go ahead and enter it. And this doesn't need to apply just to one command line. It can also be used with Compose. So in Docker Compose, you can say, this is my stack. I have a front end and a back end. And you can see we've got placement constraints that tell it where the front end and back ends go. So in this case, my SQL goes on a Linux machine whilst the IIS goes on a Windows machine. And that's how you can use Compose with this environment. Now, next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a service. Now, in this case, I'm going to spin up five machines. I'm going to put a placement constraint on them because they're Windows machines, so they must go on a Windows host. And I'm going to call the service IIS. Now, this is a very simple example of creating that service from a command line. I could also use Docker Compose and bring up that uh, image into the uh, swarm and have that operate in exactly the same way. So there's multiple ways of going about this, but ultimately here we're just going to prove that we can bring up the swarm and add these five images to it to prove that it's working as we expected. Now, in hindsight, this would have gone a lot smoother if I had bothered to pull the image of the IS down before I started and therefore didn't need to wait. However, as you can see, once the image was eventually pulled, it they start up quite quickly. So if we do a quick docker ps we can see that we have five instances up and running and if i had multiple windows machines within my swarm i would have been able to probably place them elsewhere now that's it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did give us a thumbs up if you didn't you know what to do and as always subscribe for more content